What's up guys and welcome to today's video, returning with a vlog. This is actually a long overdue vlog and link up. You probably have seen at least one of his videos. Iman has been living in Dubai for just over a year now, maybe more, might be mistaken. And it's a bit of a shame that we've not linked up and done any kind of a vlog. I have spent a bit of time with him, but he's a very focused man. But today we have the opportunity to spend the day with him. It's gonna be an interesting day for sure. So let's go. He sent his uh, head of security to come and pick us up in approximately three minutes, so let's go meet him. Just the casual Bugatti in the entrance to my building. Diva, one day. Ah, oh, of course. He's in a roll. Nice to meet you, bro. How are you doing, my friend? Nice to meet you. Just over there, lad. What's it, what's it like being security for him, man? Busy, non stop. I don't think I've been in Dubai longer than two months at once, so well, I've been working for Iman for about eight months now, so. And you, wherever he goes, you go? Yeah, that's the plan. Has there ever been any sticky situations? Um, the only sticky situation we've kind of had is mainly like South Africa. Oh, yeah. Bear in mind, Iman doesn't play games when it comes to um, spending money going out. <laughs> yeah. So in a place like South Africa, where there's poverty, the word was getting around, so we just made sure the security was tight. Yeah, I imagine in Dubai it's not yeah, an issue. Like, Dubai there's no issue. I just drive him on in Dubai. Yeah. So one of the most requested guests that I've had for the podcast is Iman. But unfortunately he said he's not doing any podcast interviews for the whole of 2023. I've tried to persuade him to change his mind, but he's sticking firm with his word, so this is the closest thing you're gonna get for now until he changes his mind. Gadget, everyone. <laughs> 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 Yo, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey man, nice to meet you, Chris. What up, G? Alex. Speaking of beach club, a little gift. You got me started. <laughs> I don't know what your size is, so try them on. Okay. Tell me which size is the best, and then I'll get the the styles you like the most. Slick. That's elegant, that one. I was gonna say, I think that's a little slice of me. Honestly, this, I think that's my favorite. It's minimal. Yeah, it's nice, bro. By the way, what's, what's your thoughts living on the palm? Huh? Living on the palm versus living in the address. For yeah. anyone who's watching this and is thinking, you know what, I want to live on the palm and I can afford living on the palm, I yay or nay? If you can do it, then do it, because it's like having a home gym, having big space, like living on the, I don't know, I guess for me, like growing up, the dream was living on the beach. Really? For me, it's they can build as many developments as they want here, and they can even build nice villa complexes and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you'll never be on the beach. Yeah. So for me, this is one of the most unique places in the world where you're literally on the beach. The good thing is I'm right at the end of my frond. So the farther down the frond gets, the wider so the leaves are. Because if you start at the beginning, you're very close to your neighbor here. It's just on the left side, there's nothing because it's right at the end, so it's just lots of water and especially at night, bro, it's... Yeah. JBR is doing my head in at the moment. Yeah. It's only going to get worse because they're building a five hotel next no to me. Way. Oh, I heard And I spoke to the, the guy who's sitting up and they, they're not making it a family friendly one. They're going to make it a full on party one. Yeah. And then there's another one called Levy, which is about to open next to me, so... Yeah. You know, there's actually not that many options in Dubai if you want to be on the beach. No. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of options in general if you just want a nice apartment. Yeah. But if you want to be on the beach, yeah. direct access, it's you're actually kind of limited. Yeah, I think yeah. I need to see water. Yeah, I think it's important for me. Yeah. Like at least some remnants of nature. <laughs> <and> that's important. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you go, you go crazy in Dubai. <laughs> you got me something from your world. I thought I'd give you a little something from my world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These are the best shoes that have ever been made, ever in history. They will look ridiculous with your outfit. What, like right now? Yeah. But. I need some nice shoes though. It's well, you can wear these with anything. Me and all my friends basically don't even wear like smart shoes anymore because we just wear LPs. These are a pair of open walls. Oh, yes. Slick. You're gonna be boxing in these? This, 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 uh... Yeah, these are boxing shoes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're sparring in these. These are the European old money shoes. These are slick. They are also the comfiest shoes you'll ever wear, ever. And that's a that's a money bag guarantee. Right then, it's box on that note. 
How long have you been boxing now? <laughs> I find these glasses just so hilarious. <laughs> when, I, when I say I've been boxing, people like make it such a big deal. I'm like, I just started boxing. Everyone ago. always has such high expectations yeah. of how good you're going to be as well. So I'm a horrible, I want to make that clear. If I'm, you ever post a boxing video, like so I've done it a few times, and I am not good. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, you're so slow, you're so stiff. It's so crazy. I'm like, bro, this is like the second time I've ever boxed. No, it's, everyone seems to have an opinion with boxing, it's quite interesting. Compared to like anything else, it's just, they'll be like, oh, do your this, that, that. I'm like, I understand what you're saying. I'm a month in. It's, yeah. it's like my fifth session or something. So, so it's, I'm shit right now, but I think now I'm gonna take boxing serious. A few times a week here in the house. And then yeah, give it a year and I'll be calling out someone. Give it a year and you won't need apps anymore. I know. You're <laughs> <laughs> shitting everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I did this was the tape video. <laughs> Still really shit. Got it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Do exactly what he did. I just trained here. This bro is sick. I got everything I could want. Oh. If you got a wrap, an adjustable bench and dumbbells, you can. Uh, dumbbells, I got kettlebells in there. That's, yeah. that's what I was doing the first few years of training. I just used to train in this, like, literally probably about half the size of this. This piece of shit garage. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best. Like, you save a lot of time. 100%. Yeah, you just walk straight down, and I just do circuits, and sometimes I'll do stuff on the beach, or I'll go for, like, a, I'll do like a half marathon or something in the desert. Damn, that's my boy. Take it one kg. Boss, I will give you two kg. Oh, because okay. you're a big guy, man. You are a big guy, okay? Like that. And one, two, relax. Stay my young man, brother. Mike. Mike. Brother, you can stay here. Call me Iron Mike. You guys good here? Yeah. Stop! Yo, we just feeling like 20 kilograms. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Stand up. Oh. Roll, right, uppercut. You're preparing like this from the downstairs, okay? Don't prepare. Just come here. That's it. Great job. So, so tiring. It's here, like the lats and the rear delts. How often are you doing the boxing training? Started like a month ago. How many times a week? Started three times. three times a week, and then now did that for a couple of weeks, and now that I'm back, five times a week. Do you notice know, when you've gone away for a bit, it's hard to get back more after. Last two days training, after being in Europe and drinking, yeah. and all that, like Just smoking as well. Boxing really makes you reevaluate your life decisions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, how much do you weigh? At the moment, 96 kilo. Nice. Right, this is dangerous. So, well, dangerous for about 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, 96? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, it's heavyweight, of course. After 91, after 91, it's super heavyweight, bro. Super heavyweight. Super heavyweight. I remember when I used to like, visit and go back to Russia and they like, son, it would be like a Friday and my cousin would be like, hey, like, do you want to come out? I'm like, where are we going? It's like, oh, it's Friday, so it's like the weekly street fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, bro, I went once, I mean, bare knuckle, these dudes are just getting knocked out. Like, they just do it for fun. Yeah, yeah. Not even for money. Just like fight club. Literally. Bro, I got fighting in my blood, but we're, we're too soft. That's why I'm doing this. Because we're too soft these days. No, we uh... Huh? <laughs> You're the softest of them all. <laughs> You're the softest of them all. <laughs> even the running, I hate running, bro. I hate it. That's why I ran a marathon. In two weeks notice, I was just like, I'm gonna run a marathon. And I just did it. <laughs> no trading, two weeks. So, so that was, how was that? It's good, I ran in three hours and 42 minutes, I think. From what I found out later, uh, is that you don't run more than like 10 kilometers for a month or three weeks prior. Like you deload. Five days before I ran my marathon, I ran a half marathon. So like I just did everything wrong. Like my body was broken on the day. And also normally, you know, marathon, you run like perfect conditions, straight roads. Uh, and then you've got pacers and stuff. I ran alone on a rainy December day in the park, in Hyde Park with like elevation. In London. Yeah.
all about techers and the footwork. Can't throw a powerful punch if your feet aren't on point. Iman's looking good. Yeah, Nick. There's no hiding in boxing, that's what I realized. With a lot of other things. Have you got a date when you want to maybe? No, for me, fighting is a difficult one, you know? Because it's, or at least in terms of like the YouTube sphere. Yeah. Behind the scenes, for sure. Definitely in the next year. But in terms of like publicized, you can get me to do it for money. In terms it'll, be of, a, it'll be a big distraction from like everything you've got going on. I don't mind. I honestly don't mind. I think it's a worthy distraction. Yeah. Because listen, let's say you still box. Right. Let's say overall your boxing stuff takes four hours a day between recovery, training. You got plenty of fucking time. It is exhausting. But stop drinking. Stop drinking. Exactly. No women. Let's go faster. Faster, 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 faster. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's harder than most of the weight session I did. Thank you for that. Yeah. A few private parties. And how deep? How deep is this? I'm not, not going to power bomb into this, am I? Okay. <sighs> That's better. Tell me about that workout. I don't even know how long we were training for, but this is challenging. Like cardio, especially for me, I'm not like a conditioned athlete. I'm a big bulky one, but I definitely need to improve upon my fitness. I've been doing some stuff with George recently, some CrossFit stuff. But the, the reason why I like the boxing is because you're like, you're learning a skill at the same time. And he was a good coach. So it was, I feel like I'm slightly, slightly better at boxing now. Burnt a lot of calories in the process. Iman's looking good as well. I, mean, I was impressed. I had no idea that he was, he had the hands. So I imagine in a couple of months, years time, he's going to be a savage, especially after he has his first fight. Yeah. Who, do you, who do you want him to fight? Bro, I think he just needs to get a few low key fights before yeah. he even tries the whole YouTube thing. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, once you're in there, it's a different ball game. And never mind if the fucking world's watching. Yeah. You know? Yeah, get him to Kazakhstan. <laughs> fight some horrible, horrible. Yeah. Guy. Bro, I, I had one amateur fight and uh, fittest I've ever been in my life, bro. Training for months, yeah, went and fought. After the first round, I sat there on the stool in the corner. I'm like, Oh my fuck, I have to go again. <laughs> like, get me out of this ring, bro. <laughs> so, like, my boxing, my boxing coach was always like, you know, on a scale of 0 to 10, how fit do you want to be by the time you get to your fight? It's like 10, it's like, no, 20. Okay. Because it's, it's nothing compared, yeah. bro. What is the thing when you sat on the sofa just watching it? You, you're so easy to criticize, just be like, oh, it's easy. I'll knock him out. But man, I, I cannot imagine what it's like to be in the ring. Different different game. We were saying how I'm going to fight you for my first fight. Alright. <laughs> take the key, Axe, take the key. No. no. <laughs> Axe, take the key. Wait, 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 let me get a picture. I want to get a picture. That's funny. Light in, take out of this forehead, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> I don't have much. Alex takes everything. Hey man, what would you recommend? It depends how long you want to smoke for. That's a Monte Cristo number two. Yeah, where's that one? Good choice. Like, it's, a, it's a good choice for my one, favorites. One guy bought the Mona cigar. Okay, so I have literally just walked down the street because I'm meeting one of my good friends, Tyler Newman from the UK. He is the absolute don when it comes to real estate. He's actually hosting a mastermind in this rather bougie villa, and he's asked me if I want to come down and do a little Q&A and speak to some of the guys on the mastermind about building a brand, growing a social media platform, because having an online presence, even in property, in fact, regardless of what you do, can literally be a game changer. So let's go say hello to the squad. Yet another insane villa from my partner. This is Tyler, guys. Welcome to the vlog. What's going on? You've actually got your own channel, don't you? I do, I'm not. I keep giving him a kick up the ass to upload more. He does, I get Instagram messages like, friendly <laughs> reminder, upload another YouTube video. It's hard work, it's hard it work, so yeah, respect to you guys. It's a five day mastermind. Yeah. Wow, days. I thought three days was intense. Well, these guys have flown out from the UK, Yeah. planned it, I'd say months in advance, some of them like literally decided two days before, like, I'm gonna come. Yeah, um, yeah for these guys that have never been to Dubai, just coming here forced them to think bigger. Like a lot of them yesterday, think I've just been thinking too small, yeah. settling. You know, when they, you live in the north of England, you don't get environments like this. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you were thinking about uh, opening up your business here. What's the name of your business? So um, I've got three businesses, all in property. One's our investment development company, which is just UK focused. And mm -hmm. then I've got an estate agency business where we do currently it's a million pound plus property. So they're called Luxury Property Partners. But then spending time out here seeing yeah. how 
everyone seems to be a real estate agent. Um, it's great, like lots of opportunity, but the competition is still quite low in terms of the skill set, in terms of the training. So. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot of people have moved out here and just automatically claim to be a professional real estate agent. A lot of women. Yeah, <laughs> of big women. Instagram audiences. Yeah, yeah. It's like the uh, personal trainers in Dubai. There's a lot of personal trainers, but literally the majority of them are absolute trash. So I'm sure you'll do very well out here. Fingers crossed. Diving right in, joined with my first and I first met Mike, I don't know when it was. It was then, wasn't it? Yeah. I caught up at this spot, walked around the corner, and I just see this massive long table with Adrian and Mike and about 12 girls. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is how they do it. <laughs> That was cool. Sharing some knowledge of uh, what I've learned so far from growing my brand, my social media platforms, and just giving advice to those up and coming go getters. Speaking of masterminds, my next mastermind is going to be in Marbella at the start of June, and it is now available to sign up, but there is, of course, extremely limited spaces, only 10 right now. The link is in the description if you want to get involved. If the link is not there, that means it's sold out. So sorry, but I'll probably be doing another one later on this year. Let's go. So we are at Sal Beach Club, which is the beach club right next to the Burj Al Arab. Nice vibey little eloquent, elegant, eloquent, elegant, elegant spot. Iman has done the selection of the foods today. He's done a good job. Probably not the healthiest. I was, I was about to say, I, <laughs> but look, some salad came for you. For elite boxers, it's probably not the best diet, but it's a Sunday, and Sunday's my cheat day, so it's ideal, really. I knew that. Yeah. Also, what's the drinking situation? Caipirinha. You on the drinks? Off the drinks? I'm off the drinks. What's your post to alcohol? I'm off the drinks, but I had a long week. <laughs> Listen, I had a long week, I deserve one drink. You're not drinking at the moment, are you? No, I'm being good. You can help. That makes two of us. Yeah. You can never drink. Well, you don't drink. Yeah, easy. Why do you, do you want, want your security guard to be? Why do you get a vote? Why do you always get a vote? What? what do you mean, bro? Uh, quite dumb. <laughs> don't have a drink. I know it's mo most. A lot of people who have the most dangerous hands tend to not drink. Really? Yeah, because if they lose control, that that makes sense. Yeah. Or maybe they're just a bit mad mm. and they don't want to unlock the beast within. Nah, I, I get smashed and I'm still level-headed. Yeah, same time. Yeah. I'm very good drunk. Every time I met you, I've been sloshed actually. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen you sober. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm really into my cigars now. Are you actually? Yeah. No way. Yeah. What's your favorite cigar? I don't have a fucking clue, but I just like smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually, I recommend you start a cigar journal. It's in your notes. When it like it takes this long to smoke tastes like this i know it sounds stupid but whenever you if you start getting into wines or cigars like the first few years ago when i first started getting into cigars i would just like keep a, a journal okay cool i'm smoking this cigar and well, you would write it down and and just in my notes just briefly okay this i noticed that this brand is a little bit lighter this one's more uh stronger this one's uh, has this burn time blah blah etc etc and then you do the same thing with wines and then once you know a little bit about it, then at least you don't make yourself look like a fool. Oh, I've done it before. What? I've made myself look like a fool. Right then, this is the Monte Cristo Habana. It will be the first addition to the notes, and I will see how it goes. It smells good. You've had a big, like... That's Monte Cristo number two. Okay. The one shit thing about smoking cigars in the wind is a lot of times you end up looking like a fucking crackhead in the corner like <laughs> trying to light your cigar trying to get away from the wind soft flame and then if you push up you got jet oh fuck that was yeah so you see if you got jet now if we were inside i'd show you how to light a cigar properly because the issue is if you light it too much you're gonna heat up and it's gonna taste very like just ashy that's also why you gotta be careful not to smoke a cigar too fast that's a big mistake people do. 
Yeah, I think I've done that a few times actually. Because then also you get super sick. You feel like you want to throw yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a great feeling. When you get like a cigar sick feel. No, yeah. There's an art to it. Mm -hmm. How's life changed for you since you moved from the address? What? Ever since being on the palm, palms? I told you, it's, it's peaceful. It's nice. It, it made me love Dubai, mm. finally. Because it's nice having my gym in the house, having that kind of family feel, even though it's just me. Ax and Alex mm. and our maid, but still, it's. Because it, before I, you were you just living by yourself before. Yeah. I so that's a bit. That's quite a that's big adjustment. A big, no, I mean I, I tried it before living with two of my camera guys, mm -hmm. and that didn't work well. But I think they just they're not they're not as on it as your team. Like you you, I don't know if they're just extremely good at what they do, or you trained no, them. No, no. Everyone around me, bro. Like for me, for me was is if I'm. Like even for example this morning, if I don't train hard, I feel like I'm embarrassing not myself, but just them. If I don't give a hundred percent, I feel like I'm, I'm an embarrassment to the unit, to the team. Mm -hmm. Like I feel a lot of honor and I feel a lot of pride for not just me, but us as a team. I know that I, I'm, I'm not dumb. I know people are very impressed by not just me, but by my team. I know everyone's impressed by my team. When my team shows up and they roll up and they're professional, they're on the ball, they don't make any mistakes, even small mistakes. I'll never mention it in public but if there's ever mistakes or things that should have been done we're having those conversations in private and we're going listen yeah. this doesn't this not only reflects bad on you it reflects bad on us as a team and if i fuck up then we're having those private conversations of like listen you making that mistake or you making that comment that should have been made or you being sort of out of touch with the conversation here or maybe disclosing information that shouldn't have been disclosed that affects all of us as a as a team so yeah, no, that's something that definitely gets trained. Yeah, I think that's something you're definitely good at. You're, you're a good leader. You've got the traits of a good leader, and you're leading by example. How many people are you, how many staff do you have now? Probably between all the companies, 150 plus. So it's, uh, I'll be honest, it's the one thing that I am very good at is hiring. It's now gone to a stage where we don't, you know, I don't, obviously I don't speak to candidates. There's people that get hired and I'm like, oh, that's cool. I had no idea you were at the company. So, what's the best piece of advice for someone who's looking to hire for the company? I, my, listen, I, I give the advice to people that hiring top talent is kind of like attracting the highest quality woman you can. You know, like everyone said, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like everyone, I, I see this a lot of people who are just starting business are like, oh, I need to get better talent. And it's like, okay, well, no, maybe you need to be a better leader, number one. And number two, maybe you sh people should be excited to work for your company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was it September or October. Somewhere around then we're at Train Beach. November. We were celebrating November. You hitting one mil. And then literally in like what was it two months or three months you just went and hit two mil. Yeah, we hit we hit a two million. I think it was a hundred and six days or something after hitting one mil. <laughs> so yeah. What is so for anyone who's looking to grow the social <laughs> media, have you got any tips to grow Listen, that. here's what it is. It, when I say that we operate at a level that very few people will understand, it's hard to comprehend. We have three full-time thumbnail people. Yeah. So like, and bear in mind, we upload one YouTube video a week. Mm -hmm. So think about that. We have three full-time thumbnail people. We upload one video a week. And that's because these people, uh, or that team, the rehash team, that's led by the uh, lead for that department, for the content team department, they go back and they rehash seven old videos a week. So I could probably not upload for the next year, I'll still gain 5,000 subs a day, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Because we're constantly rehashing, rejigging old videos. And I know that people don't have the budget for that, because that's, you know, over 10 grand a month I'm spending just on thumbnails, you know? And in terms of editors, we've got five full-time editors. Once again, that's tens of thousands a month. At some point we had, what was Alex, like 67? Around there. 67 yeah. full-time people for TikTok, short a short-form content for TikTok, Insta Reels, and full YouTube time. Shorts, full-time. They wake up and they Full-time, and when I say full-time, as in like also included in the company culture. So like in our company, or that specific company, and that also bleeds through to all the other ones as well. You think a lot of traffic was coming from other social media platforms? For the YouTube? Yeah. No. No, I, it was honestly the quality, the quality of the content, making sure, I basically got to a point where I realized Listen, I'm. Do you know what? I, cause I remember last year when uh, Max told me about you. I started watching some videos, and I just looked at my content, and I was just like, "What the fuck?" Mm. I was like, "I need to step my game up." Like the the quality, the audio, the lighting, everything. 
I was like, oh shit. Yeah, well, that's what we, levels. Yeah, but that's bro. That's us all the time. Mm. That's the thing. It's in life. It's of course you know you should you do deserve your flowers for becoming successful, and I think you deserve your recognition. But for me, I've met a lot of successful people, and I know that that doesn't really mean anything. And sure, I've gone to the position that I'm at, and that's not only in terms of you know YouTube and social media and this. I like listen. That stuff's fun for me. At the end of the day, I'm a business person, mm -hmm. and I've been running businesses for. Now this will be my seventh year. For me, and until you be, you can stay in this game for a decade, you're not really l like a legend. Like yeah, for me, like yeah, I'm yeah. I'm still here working every single day because I don't, I never want to have that conversation. And this is why team is so important. Me and my team talk about it. I never want to have that conversation in five years or or to have that thought that other people are having that conversation about our camp that mm, they fell off. Mm. They were there and then we took their spot because we have that conversation. And we've had that conversation in the past, whether that's in the software game, whether you know uh, me and my uh, right hands and I, any of my software companies, we have that conversation about different uh, SaaS companies that are our competitors, whether that's in the YouTube game, whatever it is. Do you, do you still want to be making videos in 10 years time? Yeah, just different kind of videos, mm -hmm. you know, and that's even uh, these events where we sort of put together a, a big narrative that's kind of the direction I probably want to go in as well. For after next year, I, I was thinking about uploading one video a month mm -hmm. and just making it, like I told you, sort of like that Johnny Harris uh, investigative style and making it very high production. So, you yeah. could do some on Netflix. I suppose your type of content no, probably not Netflix no, friendly. I'm not, uh, bro, I'm, <laughs> I'm not corporate friendly. Yeah, so, that. yeah, that, that definitely would not work. I'd probably want to do. Uh, a video on why C19's BS or something. I don't think that would, I don't think that would fly very well. What's the, what's the next bit? The big thing apart from that, uh, the event you're doing. What else is going on this year? Honestly, for me, just keep keep scaling it. Uh, keep scaling everything that's going on. I've been starting to in the last year or so. I've been investing in a lot of companies, and that's been very very fruitful. And I've realized. If you have money and then also you have reach and people understand you're actively investing, I'll tell you off camera, you know, some of the companies I've invested in, they, listen, I will say, most of these companies, you don't see that big win until they finally sell. But with the way things are going with them and projections and stuff like that and growth, it's been very, it's been very lucrative, as I said, because I get so much deal flow. I get so much come across my desk of amazing offers because people know that number one, I have money, and number two, because they're familiar with me. Yeah, they know who you are now. I get the best offers with the best terms. So I'd say that's probably the thing that I'm most intrigued from a business perspective. That and continuing to grow my software companies because software is just, oh, it's great. <laughs> the software game is just, is insane. And we're back in the apartment. It's a solid day. Inspiring day. Iman is absolutely smashing life. It's crazy what he's achieved at such a young age, only 23. Nearly a decade apart, that's been a big push for me to level up and take things to the next level. Iman is a proper sound guy. His work ethic, his leadership skills, his, even his, his class and his taste, like it's, it's cool to see. So um, I'm gonna get changed now. I think we're gonna head over to the arts club later on, but we can't film there, unfortunately. So uh, this is where I'll have to wrap up the vlog. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, if you don't know who he is, or it's the first time you've heard about him, go check out his YouTube channel. He has two channels, vlog one, and then the main one where he's talking about finance and business and everything else. And obviously he's got a new series, which is coming out very soon, which should be pretty tasty. So I'm out. Oh, by the way, Obviously, I haven't even talked about this saucy little outfit. These are some future releases, just a little taster of what's to come this summer. Obviously, this is a different shade of the previous shorts, the pinstripe shorts, which are available right now. And then these little saucy toweling shirts will be on display soon. It's just a matter of deciding which colorways I want to go for. If You probably can't even see in this light, but I'm trying to decide which colors to bring out. I'm going to bring out the white because I like the white. Is a black, we've got some variations of blue and some cream. So I'm gonna sit down, ask around and see what people say. But yeah, that's just one of the few many things that are coming out. This summer, check out already thirstfish, <coughs> thirstfish.com. And yeah, see you guys in the next one.